Hello everyone, welcome back to part 5, uh, B of this, yeah, Game Maker Studio tutorial. Um, yeah, so I'm continuing on from the previous video in this tutorial because, um, it was just quite a bit of content to cram into one video. Um, yeah, so what I actually want to do in this tutorial, I'm actually continuing from the button system set up in part 5, and essentially, um, yeah, what I'm actually going to be doing in this tutorial is making the same system work, but configuring it for keyboard input as well. So, we left the previous video actually with this, yeah, simple system where if you hover over the buttons with the mouse cursor, uh, they illuminate, and if you click on them, like, yeah, it generates new menus and stuff. What I actually want to do now is, um, essentially, make it so if I press the up and the down key on the keyboard, I'm actually going to use W and S for that matter, uh, it actually highlights them manually without the use of the cursor. And doing it that way um, basically allows you to add controller support because you could bind that to like up and down on the d-pad for example and yeah it would be really useful in video games because um, yeah it allows other forms of inputs and interfacing between your game um, for the end user. Um, so let's get into this, and yeah, there's really not much we do need to change to this. Um, I will make a, a quick note in the beginning of the tutorial. If we go into the input object, I have actually added one more key input. Um, this was existent from the first episode, so um, if you want to download the start file, um, you don't need to worry about this. But um, yeah, I've defined this new variable k star and set it to zero. But in the step event, um, yeah, k star uh, actually is initially sorry in the create event. It's bound to the space key, so um, space is gonna like basically act as our uh, or a button on a controller. Um, but in this instance, using space on the keyboard. Uh, yeah, and. Obviously, this is used in the same like rebinding system as well. So um, I've added it as a new case, well, case statement. Sorry, yeah, and yeah, that allows you to rebind the function if you really wanted to. But anyway, yeah, let's get back into it. I'm actually going to be using this um, case start value. So uh, I'm just trying to think now. Actually, hang on a second. I believe it's in the button object. Ah, yeah, there. Right then, yeah, so what we want to do, uh, we want to go back into the button object to begin with, uh, and then the buttons step event. And down here, where we've got if mouse check button released MB left, uh, we also want to do another function here. We're going to do or. So going to do that with the pipe symbols, you need two of them, um, and then open bracket k star. So uh, essentially if hover is set to 1 and we press the space key, that's going to then go through the switch statement, it's essentially like what we're doing with the mouse button as well. Um, then we also need to check the uh, hover value of the buttons. Now, I will explain a bit more in depth what this is doing, how I've set it up. Essentially, every single button in the game has got a hover value, but each object has a different value, if that makes sense. So if we go back into this button spawner object in the create event, that, um, yeah, it's using the instance number of the actual um, yeah, button instances to determine how many we need. So um, we're using simply one, two, and three because there's three instances here. Now, yeah, what that's going to allow us to do is compare the object's button like hover value to this global sort of hover value that's contained in the button spawner. And if those two uh, match, then we're basically going to trigger a certain event. So, in the step event of the button spawner, I believe, yeah, we're going to actually go and write some code. So, yeah, let's get into this. Um, 
we want to do if open bracket keyboard check released and for the purposes of this I'm not going to use k down because um, k down is actually like um, if the keyboard is pressed it's not actually checking the release function we actually just want to get that one binded value in the controller like input object so we're going to do controller input uh, dot k r down like so so that's essentially just referencing the uh, s key on the keyboard if that makes sense uh, then we want to do if keyboard so this is a variable that's inside the button spawner object bearing in mind keyboard toggle uh, let's copy that if key keyboard toggle uh, is equal to false open bracket close bracket uh, yeah then we want to do hover value uh, equals one because initially that is set to zero and then keyboard toggle equals true like so so what that's gonna do uh, while the game uh, is created, it's going to set all the hover value. Um, well, yeah, sorry, it's going to set this hover value to zero. But the minute we actually press an input key on the keyboard, it's going to toggle this value. Uh, and then it's going to make it one, which is actually going to start making the buttons hover over stuff. Uh, then we want to do else, open bracket, and then this is quite a big statement, this, so. Uh, keyboard toggle equals true and then we want to do hover value plus plus so that's incrementing that value and then if hover value is greater than instance number obj button so what that's going to do that's essentially checking how many uh, instances of obj button we have in the room and setting it to that value so we're checking if hover value has become greater than the amount of instances of the buttons uh, then we're going to set hover value back to one again like so and that needs an equals so yeah what that's doing if we press the down key on the keyboard now it's going to increment this value and remember positive goes down on game maker rather than up so that's why we're going downward um yeah it's going to essentially hover through all of the buttons and toggle them but when we reach the last one it's going to set it back to one again which is going to start the process and looping through it again um yeah so that's that then we want to do the up key as well so we can just copy and paste all that code uh, but then you do kr up and same process again but this time do keyboard oh sorry no hover value minus minus and if hover value is uh i believe less than or equal to zero because zero doesn't actually do anything on the hover value um it's only a range of one to the instance number of the button objects then yeah that's pretty much that done um yeah now we actually need to go back into the button object itself i believe uh and check keyboard toggle yeah so so it's quite a hefty bit of code this um we're actually going to follow it along as well from this if point in rectangle so we're going to do else if open bracket hover value oh I've got in caps uh, equals obj button spawner dot hover value so that's basically checking if the hover value of this specific instance is the same as the hover value on the button spawner object uh, and 
obj button spawner dot keyboard toggle equals true so that's checking if uh, we're using the keyboard and not the mouse so and then we want to do hover is equal to zero and hover color is equal to c underscore olive now yeah there's a few other things we need to change about this um yeah when we actually hover over the button we want to set this keyboard toggle value to false because uh, that's going to determine if we're using the mouse's collision or the keyboard selection so we're going to do obj button spawn dot keyboard toggle equals false on that and I'm trying to think now uh i think there's one more thing we need to do maybe i think i've already done it actually but i'm just going to double check uh oh don't need another workspace uh we want to go back to that button spawner object yeah so we're setting this value to true um if we press the down key or the up key so when we press the keys on the keyboard it's going to set keyboard toggle to true and likewise if we hover over it with the mouse it's going to set it to false so uh, that's what it's doing essentially uh, then yeah that's it, what that is doing that's determining the collision method so if it's false it's going to use the point in rectangle otherwise if it's true uh, then we can press the space key and it's actually going to trigger the event so yeah, uh, I'm trying to think now. I'm pretty sure that is it. So let's give it a test. So we've got the game here, and I can hover over it as usual, but if I press the down key, notice how it hovers it on it manually, and then press the down key again goes to the options menu, down key again, quit, press the down key again, or S that is, goes back to play again. And yeah, we basically made a toggleable menu. Now the up isn't working for some reason. Uh, and let's just try quitting it, so press space. And space is not working, so... Oh, that's, that's where I'm getting that wrong, okay. So we don't want to set that to 1 when you press the up, you want to set that to instance number of obj button so it gets the maximum value of what it can be uh, that's going to fix that issue then I'm trying to think what could be possibly causing the space key to not fire ah I believe the problem what it was uh, it's actually the hover state that was the problem I believe it was because that was set to zero. That was a problem. Um, by setting that to zero, uh, it's essentially preventing this from occurring. So, yeah, that that needs to be one because when we move the keys on the keyboard and toggle between them, we want to set that hover state to one so that the event can be triggered if we do press space. So yeah that that was the cause of that so that's fully fixed now uh then yeah there's one other thing i do actually want to fix about this if we select a key on the keyboard and then if we click um and it's hovered so using the keyboard it'll actually still fire so i think the best way about going about this problem is to do an and here copy that point and rectangle check there and then put all of that into one bracket and then do ok start so that should fix the problem the other thing I've just noticed just quickly uh, the hover value um, I think this is defined in the create event 
yeah, here. We actually just want to reset this value before we do anything. Um, so, set hover value to equal zero like that. We actually want to do obj button spawner dot hover value. There we go. That should fix the problem. Oh, uh, ah, that's because I'm doing it inside the switch statement. Uh, yeah, I want to do it there like that. Ta da! <laughs> Alright then. Yeah, so. Yeah, we can toggle through the menu by hitting W and S on the keyboard. Hit space, goes to the options menu, works fine. We can hover over them, we can click them, we can go back, we can hover over it with the hover spit, and then. Notice if we click it here, it doesn't do anything. If we click it there, works fine. Yeah, and it resets the value, so. Yeah, it's looking good, guys. If you need any clarity regarding this, um, please do feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I will also, as always, provide download links to these projects in the description so you can go ahead and download them, look at the code for yourself, uh, familiarize yourself with it. And um, in the next tutorial, what I want to cover is um, actually setting up some basic options in your game. Um, primarily the resolution. Um, it may take me a while to do the resolution video, however, though, because it's quite a complicated topic. Um, however, I do plan to cover it um, in as in-depth capability as what I can. So. Um, yeah, until the next one guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, please don't forget to leave it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you all in the next one. So, adios.